this is my Fairphone 4. I've had this thing for quite a while, actually. I have had this for, like, over two years now. But it has never been on the stock OS. Uh, at the beginning, it was on Calyx OS. Then I tried Divest OS for a little bit. Uh, ended up not really working out for me. Because location. Uh, and uh, then went back to Calyx. And I have been on Calyx now for, like, what, like... At least, like, probably half a year. Maybe at least a few months. I don't know. Uh, I think I went back to Calyx, like, in the winter at some point. But now I'm no longer on Calyx, even. Uh, I'm on something entirely different. Uh, and the first question is... Why? Short of it, weird behaviors. Uh, so... You know, sometimes these custom rooms can be a bit, like, you know, they can have particular issues when you use them with custom launchers, as I do. Uh, that's not even a custom ROM thing, that's an Android thing. And sometimes ROMs can just have issues because Google doesn't really do all of their development into AOSP. A lot of actual, like, improvements get made into their own proprietary applications instead, so... Uh, you know, sometimes, like, Lineage or Calyx or whatever, like doesn't have it as good so i kind of figured it was just kind of a sacrifice i had to make for uh the fact i'm using a device that isn't like calyx's primary uh device by any means and that it's a a custom room with sec like updates that are beyond what the actual phone supports uh on its like stock system uh turns out no it is not necessary to have these issues. Uh, so I have been uh, decided, you know what, time to try something new, time to try something different. But, like, I knew Divest wasn't an option for me. There aren't, like, Graphene doesn't work on the Fairphone. It, they don't support it. They have many reasons they don't want to do that for. Uh, and uh, what am I left with? Uh, so then I remember there was this one little, little project uh, that I have stumbled across before but didn't really give much thought to. That is IOD OS. Uh, that's like... It's a really weird ROM, honestly. It's like... That's what I have installed now, and it's so strange. Like, if you go to their website, they are not really as transparent and open as I would like to see. You know, like, they don't really bring up who is in their team, for example. Like, I cannot find a team people names on the website it's crazy what i can find uh, is that they have like a physical location the company but it's just kind of strange so i don't know what's up with all of that uh also their repository is a bit weird like if you look at the website normally it would have like source code under contribute they have it under support for some reason they also have, like, community under support. Like, they have a bunch of stuff under support, like, that doesn't really make sense to me. Uh, their whole, like, way they present things is really weird. Uh, either way, it does seem like at least most of their stuff is open source. They say the entire thing is, but, again, they just kind of link you to their source code and they don't really, like, document anything. So, I have no clue, like, if absolutely everything is licensed properly to be open source. Like, it's all kind of weird. Uh, that being said, one thing I do know is not everything they ship with the, like, thing is actually open source. They ship Magic Earth, which is, like, an apps application that is not open source. So, the base thing is based on Lineage. It's an open source, like, open OS, but, like, they ship a proprietary maps application for some reason. They could ship, you know, organic maps. They could ship OSM and whatever, but, like, they don't. They ship... A proprietary magic earth i really don't know why uh because everything else is open source everything else they ship seems to be open source uh, and i like open source stuff uh and like probably a big contribution is the fact that historically they were not open source they only became open source at some point and uh, yeah i guess they are not really that familiar with it and how you would normally do things i don't know uh, either way, uh, they have some cool features. Uh, they have like basically there's another lineage, like or like it's a lineage based from like uh, Divest OS, I think also. Uh, that also aims to be like you know relatively private. And I looked up like uh, a comparison table of privacy features, and like it seems to be a bit behind on like 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 it's obviously behind Divest. It's behind Calyx even. 
but not crazily. Mostly the issue is just that its updates are a bit slower than uh, Calyx. But here's the thing, Calyx has been having like lately at least a whole bunch of really late re releases. Like I think they released the August update in Stable yesterday. That's like a month later than usual. So yeah, it's like... Even Calyx isn't always amazing, they seem to be quite inconsistent, even if they're an average really good. And that, like, yeah, I like fast updates, but ultimately there's a sacrifice that has to be made to be usable, and Calyx just didn't be, be usable. So I ended up moving to this, and uh, it has some really cool per uh, like features, even if it doesn't have, uh, you know, uh, the fastest security updates. They're not horribly slow, it's not like EOS or something, like, it's it's not fair for stock OS, it's not EOS, like it, you know, it updates fast enough. Uh, it's, um, it also has extra features, it is, for example, in all of the googling not as much as like Divest, for example, but like it's like quite a bit de Googled still. It's also, um, like, it has like, you know, no, uh, no mic, no like play services, it is micro G, which you can disable, uh, and uh, like, all this basic stuff. But the one thing that's kind of stand out about this whole ROM, besides, you know, the standard, like, removing Google stuff, changing the, like, links from Lineage to be, like, their own services or someone else's services, whatever, uh, is that they, um, like, uh, provide an application. Uh, they provide, and that's their whole, like, selling point. That's their whole, like, special thing. They provide the IO application. And what it is, it's effectively a firewall. Like an actual, like it's not a shitty VPN, you know, firewall or like uh, not firewall, like DNS. It's not a shitty like DNS ad block uh, VPN. It's like an actual proper DNS ad block that's built in the system and does not take up your VPN slot. So you can, for example, use a VPN while blocking, you know, trackers, which is what you should would ideally want to do. I don't want to like, not be able to run a VPN to block things. I want them to do both. And I, of course, like, like Calyx's firewall, but that only can, like, allow and block internet connections. It doesn't allow you, which you can, by the way, also do uh, on the settings on IOD. Uh, but what it doesn't allow you to do is block individual trackers from apps. And uh, just a little post-correction here. In addition to being able to, you know block some trackers, what it also does is it shows you a list, uh, a query list of queries that have been made by apps in like the past. So you can actually see like what apps are tracking you and where they're connecting to to track you. So you could potentially use that as a data point uh, to understand like if you want to keep some app or get rid of it. Uh, it's quite cool actually. Now, Here's the catch, though. There is, a, like, a, you know, normal, freely provided, uh, like, a block list. That's their standard thing, whatever, and it blocks trackers and whatnot. Uh, but it's not the entire feature set. Because it's a company. It's a for-profit company. They sell devices, and they take donations, and they also sell a subscription. Fuck, I hate subscriptions. I mean, it makes every bit of sense why they do it. They want to make money. They're a company. They, like, are quite niche. They don't have many people using them. So they need to, like, milk money, make money from their thing somehow, you know? Uh, but it's a bit weird. Like, in the open source community, like, the application is open source, as far as I can tell. I found it source code. Like, it seems to be licensed open source and whatnot. Yeah, anyway, uh, it's it. you need to pay money to be able to, like, use, like, 99% of its features. As in, by default, you can enable or disable standard protection. If you pay them, pay them money, you can, uh, like, enable custom blocking URLs, so you can, like, block individual uh, trackers. You can choose, like enable like a higher level of blockers so just like a bigger like uh, block list and i hate this when they rush with a bigger block list it's like i get like limiting features like you know being able to individually block links but 
paywalling a bigger block list that they probably just like got somewhere online anyway, that feels really weird to me. Like I'm not a fan of that kind of business model personally. Uh, also, it's like four euros a month. It's expensive. Like it's not like one euro a month. It's not two euros a month. It's four euros a month. That's like what like uh, let's like forty eight a year. Forty eight a year. That's crazy. Anyway, uh, like, you know, let's say I use my phone for 10 years. Like, you know, I bought this thing to last me a long time. And uh, let's say I subscribe that for 10 years. That would be, like, as expensive as the phone. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> they did provide, like, free access to their, like, previous users. I'm not one of them. I haven't even bought the thing at the moment. I might buy it at some point. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's uh, that kind of sucks. Either way, like I like the ROM a lot, and uh, like even if they don't provide most of those features, I mean it's still good to have some protection, and I can still like block internet access from apps that use it. So, like through the settings, and yes, it's not as good as a firewall app that allows you to do it all in one app. I have to go like each each application individually in the settings and like adjust it, but there is the option in the settings to do that, and uh, yeah, like that's good enough for me. Um, now, one thing that I haven't brought up yet is the best thing ever. You heard me. The best thing to ever exist in this world. Every single Android operating system and iOS and every Linux flavor, whatever, every mobile operating system should do this. And I have never seen a, an operating system before this one do this on mobile. And that is the ability to uninstall system apps. Like, yeah, you can root your phone and do it. Yeah, on setup, you can sometimes choose what you want to include, but once they're included, you're stuck with them. But what you can do with iOS is you can go into uh, apps, and there's a toggle there that isn't normally there. And it's got pre-installed apps. Uh, and guess what? You can just uninstall the like system apps there. Like, I'm not talking like just like, oh, yeah, you can uh, uninstall news. I'm talking you can uninstall... The phone app, the messages app, calendar, calculator. You can uninstall the fucking updater app. And then you can reinstall them from the same menu. Like, it keeps the menu there and you can reinstall or uninstall them as you want. It's great. That way, I don't, I'm not, like, stuck with, like, a bloat. You can really get rid of all the things. The only thing you can't uninstall are, is micro G. Uh, you can disable it, but you can't, like, fully uninstall it. I presume it just needs to be integrated at such a deep level. That they can't really do that. But either way, like, the fact I can do, like, uninstall the system updater is crazy. I love this. This is, everything should have this. This is, this is the best feature to ever exist. Like, like, why is this niche privacy ROM have this and, like, every other ROM, like, Calyx, Graphene, whatever, don't have this shit? This is, like, the most obvious thing that should be there. And why doesn't Google just do this straight up? I know why they don't, but, damn, I wish they did. Uh, it's a, it's a great, great feature. It's a small thing, but it's a really, really meaningful thing. And it's just, I love that. Uh, so for the time being, uh, since like two days ago, or was it yesterday? I don't know. I think it's the day before yesterday. I don't know. Uh, I have been on uh, this uh, iOS and I'll probably keep using it. Uh, you'll see like probably like a more long-term review at some point. But at this point, very satisfied some weird things regarding the company. Uh, nothing that would like trigger alarm bells. Nothing that would make me think, oh, fuck, they're evil and they're stealing my data. But more like, they don't really know how to operate open source. That's much as clear to me. That's like, I, it doesn't look malicious. It just looks bad. And oh, yeah, they also have like a issue tracker where they, like say com completed tasks and they like, it's just like, in pro to do and in progress are just empty. And there's like open issues that they like have never resolved from like two years ago. So their like whole like open source and like, you know, issue handling and all this is, you know, I can tell they don't really do much there. Like the whole community thing is kind of weird, but the actual product is like in my ex limited experience so far, quite good. So yeah, uh, I'll see how it goes over time. Uh, and I'll be probably making a long-term review in like a month or two.